All right, this is OpenStax US History, Chapter 6, Section 2, The Early Years of the American Revolution. So last section, 6.1, we got to the first battle of the American Revolution, which was Lexington and Concord. The first shots fired, the shot heard around the world, and the Declaration of Independence. So once that document was signed by the Second Continental Congress, essentially what it meant was that in order for the United States to achieve independence, they would need to be successful in the war or the conflict against Great Britain. Recall that the first fighting took place in Boston, right? Lexington and Concord were located in Massachusetts. The British had fled Boston towards Canada, regrouped, and were now ready essentially to wage this war. So the British strategy initially was to target the middle colonies. The middle colonies include New York and Pennsylvania. The reason for this was that they were the most uh, densely populated colonies. It was also the areas in which the British uh, seemed or at least appeared to have the most loyalist support. That is to say that more people in those middle colonies were loyal to the British side rather than the side for independence. And maybe most importantly was to, in their words, cut off the head of what they believed to be what was leading this independence movement, which was the colony of Massachusetts. So you attack the middle colonies, isolate Massachusetts on the north, and eventually uh, get loyalist support and eventually be victorious you know, in that conflict. Uh, New York was where you saw some of the first engagements take place. The Battle of Long Island was between British and what we call continental forces. This was a British victory. Uh, initially, many of the early battles go very, very poorly for the American side. Uh, New York City was captured by the British. And essentially what these military victories mean is not just you know, a defeat for the colonial army on the battlefield, but for every territory that the British take over, it essentially means that the loyalists can kind of come out of hiding. And so while the British army marched in the street of New York, you had, you know, loyalists inside the colonies waving the Union Jack and showing their support for the British army, whereas they couldn't be as loud or as supportive, uh, not really knowing whether or not, uh, you know, what's kind of side the majority is on. So uh, when the British were successful in the military, it also had the effect of getting them more popular support from loyalists who could essentially just come out of the shadows, come out of come out of hiding, so to speak. Uh, George Washington was chosen to be the general of the Continental Army. Uh, what was kind of important here was that the Continental Army was not just simply you know, each state having their own militia. That's really what had happened prior to the First and Second Continental Congress. But this was, you know, a united army for really all 13 colonies. And it was important to choose George Washington to be in charge of the Continental Army because he was from the South. And this was a way for both North and South to kind of get on the same page when it came to this revolutionary movement. Because up until this point, Practically all the fighting had taken place in the North. And so by appointing George Washington, not only did he have the military experience, but this was also a way for him to represent Virginia and to be fighting essentially for the cause of Massachusetts and to show a united colonial effort. Uh, in order to uh, you know, really survive on the battlefield, George Washington had to break what were conventional tactics. Conventional tactics were more or less just kind of head-to-head -head clashes on the battlefield. Uh, instead, George Washington used more like uh, ambush tactics. So both the Battle of Trenton and the Battle of Princeton, uh, both of these were what we might call either ambush or surprise tactics by George Washington and the Continental Army, refusing to engage head-to-head, -head, instead sort of sneaking around at night. Uh, and they were both colonial victories and that was especially uh that was especially important for morale and morale is what we call fighting spirit 
because when it came to essentially the conventional tactics, when it came to you know the Continental Army facing the British Army on the battlefield, the Continental Army lost. And the more and more that the uh, colonists kept losing these battles, the less likely people were going to enlist and sign up and fight and risk their lives for the colonial effort. So both of these battles, the Battle of Trenton and the Battle of Princeton, were very important in really increasing the fighting spirit for the colonial side. At the Battle of uh, Trenton in particular, Washington and his men were successful in capturing a large number of Hessians. Hessians are German soldiers for hire. Right, German soldiers for hire. They were paid by Great Britain to fight for their cause. Uh, and these were both uh, kind of victories for the colonial side. Uh, as the war continues to progress, Washington and his men continue to refuse, essentially to engage the main, main British army. This allows for Great Britain to march on to Philadelphia, which was essentially kind of like the capital of the 13 colonies in a way. This was where the Second Continental Congress had met. This also fell into British hands, right? So along with New York, Philadelphia falls into Great Britain's hands. It was, you know, New York and Philadelphia were the most populated cities in all the 13 colonies. And so this certainly was a sign that, um, that things were not going well for the colonial side. You can see here that the Second Continental Congress was forced to flee. While things were going good for Great Britain and Philadelphia, things were going very, very bad for Washington and his men. Uh, the winter at Valley Forge was a very tough sort of survival by Washington and his men. Uh, you know, at Valley Forge, you had a mass number of desertions. Soldiers starved to death. They died of disease, uh, but continued to kind of keep on fighting. Uh, this was especially a... A, one of the lowest points for the Continental Army during the entire course of the American Revolution. You know, would the colonial side throw in the towel? Very tough, but continuing to, uh, uh, you know, fight. Uh, the important turning point came at Saratoga. Saratoga is what we might call the most important battle in the Revolution, right, where things were really going bad with the exception of Trenton and Princeton, just sort of these ambush attacks that could sort of give the colonists some good news. Everything else had been really going very, very poorly for the colonial side, but the Battle of Saratoga turned out to be the turning point, which turned in favor of the 13 colonies. Essentially, you had an army from Canada that was marching down to Philadelphia to combine the British forces. They were intercepted by colonial troops and defeated. So the Battle of Saratoga, maybe most importantly, was a colonial victory, right? Colonial victory. Um, this had a very important sort of domino effect. Uh, beginning number one was where France stood. In fact, one of the best case scenarios for the 13 colonies was to win French support. Ben Franklin had been in France during this whole time. And he was trying to convince the, convince the French king to support the American cause. The French king was worried that the Americans couldn't win. The fact that the Americans could point to the Battle of Saratoga and say, look, we can defeat the British on the battlefield, gave all the reason that France needed to uh, not just support the uh, US war effort, which it did through both military and financial support. That is to say, French money, French guns, and maybe most importantly, the French Navy now targeted British ships and were going to the American cause, but also the fact that France recognized the United States' independence claim, that is, they recognized the U.S. as an independent and sovereign nation, and that would go essentially a long way. You had French military experts like Marquise de Lafayette, we call him a French military uh, expert, you know, he was sent to the colonies with French money, French guns, and with the help of the French Navy, it really began to turn the tide more so in favor of the war for the uh, colonists. Now, the colonists expected a quick victory after this, but the war continued to certainly trudge on. But the fact that France was now supporting not just France, but also Spain, which both of these nations declared war on Great Britain, on Britain, 
dramatically change the outcome and flow of the conflict. Great Britain had to remove half their troops back to their uh, home country in order to prepare a defense against France and Spain. And uh, all of this was very, very important because at the end, and we know this now looking back, in the end, it's very difficult to imagine the United States being successful in the American Revolution without French support. And of course, that all came from the victory in the Battle of Saratoga.